welcome to the video so in this video I'm going to show you how to make an interactive graph using a drop down list and some VLOOKUPs now this video has been requested by one of the delegates that I had on a uh, online training course the other day so I'm building this going to put it up on YouTube um, and hopefully this will be of benefit so step one I've got my worksheet here and I've got my my headings what I hope to achieve is I've got this figures worksheet here with the same headings and I've got my regions. I want to be able to use one row of data, pull it back into this worksheet um, in order to then have a graph that's generated from it. So step one, I need to make the drop down that's going to form the criteria for my uh, VLOOKUP. So to do that, I'm going to go to the data ribbon and on the data ribbon in data tools I'm going to pick this option here of data validation now if I click directly on the little picture rather than the arrow it takes me straight into the data validation uh, section so within here I'm going to change it from any value to the option of a list now to give it the the source of the list where the the words are coming from I'm going to click into this box here I'm going to go to the figures worksheet and I'm going to highlight my four regions. Now to give the end user who's going to use this particular drop down some guidance as to what it's for, I'm going to put an input message in. So under the title, I'm just going to put select region. And then in the input message, I'm going to put only pick from the list provided. Now, in the event that they decide to type something in that isn't on my list, I'm going to go to the error alert um, tab. Now, on this tab, you will see there is a box with a drop down with stop, warning, and information. Warning and information give them the ability to ignore this particular rule that I'm putting in place. I don't want them to be able to do that, so I'm going to put it back onto stop. I'm going to type the title as error. And then I'm going to put a message in there. So I'm going to put your choice was not on the list. Try again. So, <coughs> so now that I've done that, if I press OK, you'll see I now get my visual asking me to select a region to only pick from the list provided. If I press the drop down, you'll see I get my four choices. Now, if I decided to type something that wasn't on the list, if I move out of that cell, I now get my error message telling me that my choice was not on the list and to try again. Okay, so in order for you to be able to see the, the formulas working, I need to pick a, an option from the list provided. So I'm going to pick northeast to begin with. I'm going to move into the B4 cell to build my first formula. So I'm going to use a V lookup for this. Now, if you're on Office 365, I have done another video that's already up on YouTube that shows you how to use the new X lookup to do this. But I know quite a few people out there who are still on older versions of Excel that don't have the um, the XLOOKUP function. So this is for those people who have got any version other than 365. So I'm going to start with equals VL. You'll see I get the visual thing on the screen there that tells me the only formula available to me that begins with V and L is VLOOKUP. So I'm going to press the tab key. That then puts the rest of the word in. Now, if you're not an experienced uh, user of VLOOKUPs, this help that appears on the screen may look a bit intimidating to you. So rather than have to worry about where I put commas in and have I put the right thing in the right place, if you go up to your formula bar and press on the insert function button, this will bring up a function argument box. So we can now build our formula just by filling in these spaces. And the really good thing about this is it gives you some guidance as to what you're supposed to put in each bit. So the first thing that I need is my value that I'm going to send it to look for. So in this case, that is A4. 
So I'm asking it to go and find me northeast. If I go to the table array now, I now need to tell it where to look for that particular bit of information. So I'm going to go back to my figures worksheet. I'll just move that over there. Now, I'm not going to do its job and just go straight to northeast. What I need to do is I need to show it potentially the choices that it's got to choose from. Not just the right choice. As well as that, I also need to include any information that I might want to return as my overall answer. So I definitely need the quarter one figures, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. Now that I've done that, if I was going to use this formula moving forward and I might copy it down, and a lot of people make one VLOOKUP to then make a series of lookups below, get into the good practice of making this uh, an absolute or lock this area as some people would call it. Keyboard shortcut to do that is F4. So if I press the F4 key on my keyboard now, you'll see it's locked the A5 and the E1. Now for the next bit, I need to tell it which of these four, these five columns that I selected has the information in that I want it to return. So as I was in the first quarter column on the graph worksheet, that is the second column of my table because the first column is where the region names are, second column is quarter one, third is quarter two, four is quarter three, and five is quarter four. So I'm going to put a two in this box and you'll see I filled in the three mandatory boxes so I'm now getting an answer so it's telling me that the figure the amount that that region um, sold was 1259 now the final box is an optional box with VLOOKUPs and what that's used for is to restrict what the VLOOKUP can return for you so by default as it is now if it couldn't find what I'd asked it to find, it will go to the nearest thing that it can find to it. Now, if this was a numerical thing that I'd asked it to find, it will go to the nearest value below the, the figure that I've asked it for. What I want is if it can't find that particular bit of information, I actually want it to come back with um, NA, which is the equivalent of not applicable in Excel. So I'm going to put the word false in there because as the, the help guide tells me, if I want it to only find me an exact match, I need to put the word false in there. So now that I've done that, if I press OK, you'll see I get the, the figure for this first quarter, which should, if we look, yep, matches the figure that I've got there. Now, I'm going to use this formula to make the other three. What I don't want is I don't want the A4 to move to B4, C4 and D4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click into my formula at the top, do another F4 just to lock that A4 as well. Now when I drag this across using the, the little square at the bottom of the active cell, you'll notice I get the same answer for each of those calculations. Now I'm going to show you two ways to fix this problem. One is a, a quick and easy fix that doesn't require you to, to do anything too, too strenuous to the formula. The other one requires you to add a new function. So I'll start with the easy one. In a cell, or in a collection of cells somewhere on the spreadsheet, just for ease I'm putting them above, you need your column numbers that you need. So I know column one, uh, quarter one is column two, quarter two is column three and so on and what I would do there is I would replace mm -hmm. the reference within my V lookup to the static number two to the cell that I've typed two into so if I now control enter and if I drag that across you'll see when I let go I get the correct answer so it's now doing the VLOOKUP here, looking in the third column, looking in the fourth, looking in the fifth. What you could do if you didn't want those visible, you could quickly hide them just by highlighting them, going to your font colour and making them white so that they blend in with the cell. The problem is if someone comes along and changes your spreadsheet and deletes what's in those cells, you will lose your answers. 
So an alternative to that is there is a function called column. And column is a really simple function. It counts what column you're in based on A being 1. So if I put B4 in my column formula, you'll see that it returns the number 2. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my original VLOOKUP formula. I'm going to replace the B2 within there with the word column, put my open bracket in, and I'm just going to reference B3. I'll only pick B3 because that's where I've put the title of, of what that column is going to contain. If I now close my bracket, again I'm going to control enter to keep myself in that cell, and I now get the answer again. If I drag that across, you'll see that that then updates the other three formulas, and I'm now getting the right answer. So now that I've got that, if I select that area, I can go to insert, I'll go to pie chart, I'll have a 3D pie. I'll just make it look a bit nicer. Let's add some, there we go. I'll add the value for each segment on each segment. So it all looks a bit nicer than it did when I first inserted it. Now, because we've created these four V lookups, and this first box that it's looking for the information from is a drop down. What it now means is if I press that drop down, I could go to Southeast as an example, and not only have the figures in the cells changed, but my graph is now updated because remember the graph is based on that area that I selected before I created them. So I've now made myself an interactive pie chart. So with just a few simple steps, we've now given an end user the ability that they can play about and change things and, and see different results from just one set of figures, from one set of formulas. If you like that, guys, uh, can you give me a thumbs up? And if you'd like to see other videos in the comments, could you put what kind of things you'd like to see me do within Excel or Word or PowerPoint or any of the Microsoft Office packages? including SharePoint and 365. Um, thank you for watching, and if you want to watch more of my videos, please remember to subscribe.